thought I'd show you guys some of the perks of living in Southern California. Aren't they gorgeous? Guys, it's a gorgeous day in Southern California. And so we have come to pick some oranges. This tree grows oranges all year long. It's fantastic. We're gonna grab as many as we can. We were able to pick about seven bags of oranges today to take home and juice. Stay tuned. The oranges tend to be super gross when they come off of the tree. Um, so in order to avoid that transferring to the orange juice, when I am peeling them and prepping them for the juicer, it's really easy. I just <laughs> toss them all in the sink. There's so many rather than trying to wash them one by one. We had a lot of oranges off the tree today. That's one perk of living in Southern California. The orange tree never stopped producing oranges even though we just went through winter, winter, California winter. And not only did we go through California winter, but we're now into January. So maybe this is one of the good things that came out of COVID, right? They don't need to be perfect because again, like I'm just gonna juice them. Even when I used to go to the, mar the farmer's market here in Southern California, down at the marina before it closed with COVID requirements and restrictions, the gentleman, there was one gentleman who was awesome who had an orange station and he would sell the imperfect oranges as juicing oranges because you don't really care what they look like if you're not trying to make a centerpiece or trying to set it on your counter for a week or something to look pretty. Who cares what they look like if you're just gonna peel them and throw them in a juicer, so. I had a juicer from, I think I got the original juicer I had from Amazon, but I make, <laughs> I make orange juice a lot and I make a lot of orange juice when I make it. I usually make about a gallon or two. Obviously it depends on how many oranges I can get, but with something like this, this is going to make, this is probably going to make two gallons because I still have more in the bag. They just didn't fit in the sink yet. This is probably going to make about two gallons and then I don't juice all of them at once because since there's no preservatives and it goes straight from the juicer into the fridge and then into our tummies, it does tend to not last as long in the fridge as like a standard Tropicana or, you know, whatever juice you can get at the store. It doesn't last as long just like everything else organic. And I know that sounds weird, but it's organic because it doesn't have all the extra preservatives, but then you just have to make sure that you're eating it or drinking it faster or cooking with it, whatever the case may be. These oranges were great too around the holidays. I'm sure you guys saw the different TikToks of people creating the, you know, at home potpourri winter smell. Goodness knows, we just have oranges for days when it comes to stuff like that. We compost and make our own dirt in the backyard, especially during the springtime. Um, the garden is not as active right now because the season is over. So we're not using as much dirt. Um, but orange peels, because we go through so much stuff like this, it's so good for the juicer, excuse me, for the composter, because I can put the peels in there and then all of the extra pulp, because we don't really like our orange juice very pulpy, especially the kids. They're always, mom, what's this gross stuff inside here? So, um, because we don't drink a lot of the pulp, all that pulp, I put right back into the composter and it's so fantastic. You can see how disgusting this water is. <laughs> Um, from the oranges because they were so dirty, but I mean, it's just natural. Nothing's wrong with them. They're just gotta be clean. They've got this nice thick rind that's protecting them. So I don't have to worry about how gross this water is. We're just gonna peel them and juice them anyways. So anyways, I'm just washing them at this point. It's really nothing fancy. Once I get them rinsed off, especially the super dirty ones, just gonna let them dry for a little bit. Now that the oranges are washed and they are prepped and ready to reprep, if you will, for the juicing aspect and portion, I am going to have you watch just a couple minutes how I get the oranges prepped, get them peeled and get them ready for the juicer. So even if the oranges look kind of dirty, they aren't necessarily bad. Sometimes that's just from falling on the ground or sometimes they grow next to each other. I have a really hard time starting the peel of an orange, I usually use a knife to start. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna be very honest with you guys, peeling the oranges is the most tedious part in getting them ready, but I use an actual juicer that will take the entire orange outside of the peel. So it's just easier to do it this way. And I find that I get so much more juice rather than using 
like a handheld juicer where you can slice it in half and just get that. Um, this just makes so much more. So uh, let's see how long this takes. <laughs> As you guys can see, I peeled about 25 pounds of oranges. I still have about 10 pounds uh, on the back counter. I think this will be plenty and it'll make enough for us for the next about two weeks. We'll see exactly how much it makes. I usually keep some from around the house just for eating uh, and other things so we don't choose all of them when we pick them. But I'm gonna be using the Breville, the juice fountain. I replaced my juicer, like I said, about six months ago because the other one died in the middle of a juicing session, but thankfully we were only about one to two oranges away when it started smelling like it was burning. And I am going to um, do a quick time lapse for you guys. I'm going to do another video to show you the process itself, but I just peel them. They don't have to be perfect. The machine is really good about taking the whole orange and taking out the pulp and making sure that you can choose how much pulp you want in it. It does come with this little leader jar, which is what attaches right here and allows the juice to flow in. I never use this and I say that because, well, okay, when I'm making orange juice. And I say that because this only holds a liter and I usually make about a gallon at a time. So it's just not enough. And with the foam that it creates, it just uh, doesn't work for me and what I'm doing for my family. But I typically take a large bowl, wash it out, get it ready. And then I set it in my sink. I pop it up a little bit and I allow the juice to flow into there. Eventually I will fill it, uh, use a funnel to get it into my jars, which we'll see in just a little bit. But I hope you enjoy watching the process and peeling the oranges is a little bit intense. I'm not going to lie to you. It's the most tedious and time consuming portion. But once it's done, you're almost there. You're in the home stretch. So I promise you there's going to be amazing orange juice at the end. So it's worth it in the end. And it's just so much healthier for you. And it's just so much better. And you can taste when it doesn't have all the preservatives. You can taste the lack of preservatives, if you will. And you can just, it's so much more rich. And it's just amazing to be able to say that we made it ourselves. The kids love to do it. They love to be involved and I enjoy allowing them to do that. So let's see what it looks like. As you can see, we are done juicing the oranges. It made a little bit more than I anticipated. As you can see in the back of the Breville here is where all of the pulp collects. There's a lot in here too. I normally will run the pulp through another time, but because it made so much and my bowl is already overfilling and you can see the foam, I don't want to run it through again. So I'm going to clean out the pulp and I lied. I actually do use this and I use this to get the orange juice from here through my funnel and into my jars that I use, my mason jars. This is my larger one that I usually keep for the family. And I do these smaller ones in case I'm gonna share with friends uh, or anybody else. So I hope you enjoyed watching the process and now I'm gonna show you how I get it into can form. All right, we are done juicing and we have now put them all in our can canisters. canisters. <laughs> um, I made about 224 ounces of orange juice. So like I said, with five mouths, it goes by pretty quickly. I usually give away one or two efforts chilled for a day just because I enjoy sharing the wealth. But I use these ball jars. I've been using them for years. I use them when I can. So um, it's just naturally the jars that I use. I don't press these can, I don't can these jars. There's no need for that, um, especially because we go through it so quickly, but it's just a good way. I find the most sterile way and the most environmentally friendly way to can as I go, but I'm excited. I love making homemade orange juice. I'm always excited when it's done and then we can chill it and enjoy it and share it. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. I hope that maybe it's if you have an opportunity or a avenue to get some oranges or any other 
fruits and vegetables that you can juice. I hope this inspires you to do so. It tastes so much better than the store and I will stand by that until the day that I die. But I hope that maybe, again, this inspires you. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks again for watching. Appreciate you. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time. Bye-bye.